The fury and force of a nuclear bomb, something we all hope we'll never experience. Nuclear tests in the atmosphere, so long as other states do not do so. This is the terror that once again casts its eerie shadow over the face of the earth. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The development of weapons and experimental pathogens is usually justified for the good of the people until it leads to the demise of all morals. Where are you, David? You know where you are? Can you say anything, David? Today you will get to learn about some of the most unbelievable weapons, physical and psychological, that no one was supposed to see. You feel the effects of the agent? Everything's moving. Run, fire. To investigate the effect of nuclear weapons and to demonstrate their power to the world, Two nuclear tests were conducted by the United States at Bikini Atoll Marshall Islands in July 1946. Known as Operation Crossroads, this experiment marked a significant moment in nuclear history, consisting of two tests, Abel and Baker. Abel was an airburst test, detonating a bomb at an altitude of 520 feet and obliterating target ships, while Baker was conducting an underwater test, detonating a bomb known as Helen of Bikini about 90 feet below the ocean's surface, left a lasting impression. This underwater explosion created a massive water-like mushroom cloud and contaminated the surviving target ships with radioactive water and the iconic images of underwater nuclear explosion. Only nine surviving Baker target ships were eventually decontaminated and sold for scrap, while the rest were sunk at sea after decontamination efforts failed. Wahoo Nuclear Blast The Wahoo operation was part of the larger series of tests known as Operation Hardtack, performed on May 16, 1958, in Inatok Atoll. Its main reason was to understand the effects of underwater nuclear explosions. particularly on naval vessels and submarine warfare, as well as to monitor its effects on the surrounding environment, especially water. The test was conducted at a depth of 150 meters, with the bomb with a yield of approximately nine kilotons. The Wahoo blast created a significant dome of water while providing data on underwater shock waves, along with the potential of damage dealt to submarines and surface ships. Now, also, these results were quite satisfactory, but the aftermath effects for marine life, environment, and water contamination was irreparable. The radioactive contamination could also spread globally, which then sparked an international outcry over the threat of global extinction due to the use, development, and testing of nuclear testing. Russian Dog Experiment In the 1940s, Soviet scientists embarked on a groundbreaking yet ethically questionable experiment. They aimed to keep a dog's head alive, separate from its body. This experiment, conducted by Dr. Sergei Brukin Ko, was a part of early research into artificial life support systems. Using a primitive heart-lung machine called the autojector, the scientists managed to succeed in their goals. The head reacted to stimuli. It blinked, moved its ears, and even responded to taste. This experiment was both fascinating and horrifying, showcasing the potential of life support technology, but also raising profound ethical questions. The impact of this experiment was twofold. On one hand, it was a significant step in medical science, contributing to the development of cardiopulmonary resuscitation and life support systems. On the other hand, it opened a Pandora's box of ethical dilemmas regarding the treatment of animals in scientific research and the boundaries of life extension. Joe 17 On September 21, 1955, the Soviet Union, in an effort to increase the lethality of their naval weapons capability, designed and tested the first nuclear-capable torpedo called Joe 17. 
The test was conducted at Cornea Guba, Nova Zimla, to evaluate the effectiveness of the developed prototype. The groundbreaking test of 3.5 kilotons of blast yield reached record high in the sky, marking a pivotal moment in naval warfare capability. Joe 17 demonstrated the practicality of nuclear armed torpedoes, fundamentally altering naval strategic paradigms. The success of Joe 17 not only showcased the USSR's fast advancing nuclear capabilities, but also helped to understand the different possible applications such as this along with other creating effects, such as a potential tsunami generation to wipe out cities, if not an entire naval fleet. On the positive side, it propelled advancements in nuclear physics and engineering. However, the negative consequences were far-reaching. The test led to significant environmental contamination and long-term health effects for the local population, including increased cancer rates and genetic mutations. Tsar Bomba In the autumn of 1961, the world got to witness one of the most iconic nuclear explosions that still echoes through history. The Soviet Union, in a show of might, detonated the Tsar Bomba, a hydrogen bomb with a staggering 50 megaton yield. Imagine a device so potent that its mere existence questioned the very ethics of scientific pursuit. A special railway carriage with walls and roof that could be dismantled transported this behemoth. The Tu-95 bomber that was tasked with carrying the Tsar Bomba was painted with a special protective coating, a feeble guard against its own cataclysmic cargo. As the bomb descended on a parachute, time seemed to stand still, followed by a monumental explosion with a bright, terrifying flash. The explosion was a spectacle of horror and fascination, creating a mushroom cloud 60 kilometers high visible up to 1,000 kilometers away. This event, while a testament to human scientific achievement, stands as a stark reminder of the moral and ethical boundaries that humanity crossed over during the arms race back in the era of the Cold War. Project MK Ultra. Cameron suggested using chemical agents to break down ongoing patterns of behavior. Nuclear weapons may seem quite destructive until you get to know the damage that psychological weapons can actually do without creating such a mess. In the 1950s, the CIA wanted to beat the Soviet Union in every possible way. In order to do so, they went down every possible path, including shady stuff like mind control. This was when a covert and controversial program known as MKUltra was introduced. MKUltra operatives conducted experiments in schools, universities, hospitals, and even nurseries across the country and Canada. This included hypnosis, sensory deprivation, drugs such as lysergic acid, dialithamide, or LSD that can alter mood and human perception, along with every possible nightmarish activity. The subjects were often unaware of their participation in the CIA operation that aimed to discover new and improved methods of interrogation that included mental manipulation intended to be used against adversaries such as the Soviets. However, the entire operation was halted in the 70s, soon after it was exposed to Congress. Although the CIA destroyed most of the evidence of MKUltra, some of the documents were leaked and exposed, showcasing the horrifying extent of the project. Never mind a doctor, professional specialist who's supposed to care about people's minds. Castle Romeo. Romeo was part of the Operation Castle series aimed at testing a high-yield thermonuclear device as part of further development of hydrogen bomb technology. On March 27, 1954, at the Bikini Atoll, Marshall Islands, the Romeo test produced results that were far unexpected, with a blinding flash and the rising cloud. The mushroom cloud billowed into the sky, showing its vast size and the immense power of hydrogen bombs. With a yield of approximately 11 megatons, 
the test provided critical data on the design and efficiency of thermonuclear weapons, particularly in the development of deployable warheads for strategic purposes. The test also played a role in international discussions about nuclear testing and its global impact. As the fallout from such large-scale detonations since the test of the past raised concerns about health and environmental effects. Edgewood Experiments You feel the effects of the agent? Everything's moving. Here's an incident that highlighted the dark side of military research and how far governments would go just to ensure their advancements. From the 1950s to the 1970s, the Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland became the site of secretive and ethically dubious experiments involving testing chemical and biological agents on thousands of U.S. military personnel to study their effects and potential use in warfare. The substances tested included hallucinogens like LSD, incapacitating agents, nerve agents, and irritants without fully informing the soldier about the nature of the experiments or the risks involved. Just imagine getting used as a guinea pig when you signed up to serve your country. The experiments had significant negative consequences, as many participants suffered long-term health issues, including psychological trauma and physical ailments, without adequate follow-up care or compensation. This chapter in military history serves as a cautionary tale about the balance between national security interests and the ethical treatment of individuals. Where are you, David? You know where you are? Can you say anything, David? Soviet RDS-6s On August 12, 1953, the Soviet Union managed to demonstrate their progress in developing hydrogen bomb technology, with RDS-6s, also known as Joey-4. The test was conducted at the semi palantisk test site in Kazakhstan that demonstrated a different approach to thermonuclear design as compared to the U.S. models, where a layering design concept known as the sloka, or layer cake, was used. The RDS-6's detonation, while smaller than later thermonuclear tests, still illuminated the sky, with a powerful shockwave followed by a significant mushroom cloud, visually showcasing the Soviet Union's entry into the thermonuclear age. With a yield of around 400 kilotons, the RDS-6s was not as powerful as the American thermonuclear test, but marked a significant milestone for the Soviet nuclear program. Stanford Prison Experiment This is considered one of the worst psychological experiments due to serious ethical violations, including lack of informed consent and inadequate protection. In 1971, psychologist Dr. Philip Zimbardo sought to investigate the psychological effects of perceived power, focusing on the struggle between prisoners and prison officers. In the experiment, 24 male college students were randomly assigned to be either guards or prisoners in a mock prison setup in the basement of the Stanford Psychology Building. The study was intended to last two weeks, but was abruptly ended after just six days due to the extreme and distressing behavior displayed, particularly by those assigned as guards. The guards quickly began to exhibit abusive and authoritarian behaviors. While the prisoners showed signs of severe stress and helplessness, the experiment demonstrated how normal, psychologically healthy individuals could exhibit sadistic behavior when placed in certain social roles and environments. The Stanford Prison Experiment has been both heavily criticized for its ethical issues and lauded for its insightful findings into human psychology. Operation Grapple Y Segment In the serene Christmas Island in the Pacific on April 28, 1958, the monumental event of Operation Grapple Y unfolded. This operation aimed to perfect the design of thermonuclear weapons, making a critical point in the UK's development of nuclear capabilities. Operation Grapple Y's main feature was its powerful hydrogen bomb, 
designed to yield an immense explosion. The test resulted in a blast far greater than expected, with a yield equivalent to about 3 million tons of TNT. This massive explosion was a display of sheer power, significantly advancing the UK's position in the nuclear arms race. It demonstrated the UK's ability to produce a megaton range thermonuclear weapon, a crucial deterrent during the Cold War era. Operation Grapple Y, while a milestone in military technology, also serves as a cautionary tale about the consequences of nuclear testing, as it had profound negative implications and long-term health effects for those involved in the test and the local population. Minus 20 seconds. Sleep Experiment The Russian sleep experiment, often cited as a dark and mysterious chapter from the mid-20th century, is a story that has captured the imagination of many. According to the tale, Soviet researchers in the 1940s conducted a horrifying experiment to study the effects of sleep deprivation, using an experimental gas to keep subjects awake for extended periods. In this narrative, five prisoners were chosen as subjects and placed in a sealed environment where the stimulant gas prevented them from sleeping. The experiment reportedly took an unexpected turn as the subjects descended into confusion, horrifying hallucinations, and violent behavior. As the days progressed, the psychological state of the subjects deteriorated drastically. When the researchers opened the doors to the chamber, all the madness accumulated in one place bursted out, taking everything with it. However, it's crucial to note that the Russian sleep experiment has no authentic documentation. And why would there be? It was performed by a highly secretive government, and considering how the situation got completely out of hand, there is a big chance that they removed its evidence, leaving behind only theories. Castle Bravo The fallout was to the east and relatively heavy for several hundred miles. Castle Bravo was intended to test a new, powerful design for a thermonuclear bomb, marking a significant advancement in U.S. nuclear capabilities. On March 1, 1954, at Bikini Atoll, Marshall Islands, the Bravo test resulted in an unexpectedly large and spectacular explosion, producing an intense fireball and a massive mushroom cloud that rose high into the atmosphere. The sky was illuminated with the bright searing light followed by the ominous and towering cloud. With a yield of 15 megatons, far exceeding predictions, Bravo became the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the United States. The test caused significant radioactive contamination and its higher than expected yield provided new results into the behavior of thermonuclear reactions and the potential for larger scale nuclear devices. Wigwam Test In less than 10 minutes, you will become an eyewitness to a most unusual atomic test. Operation Wigwam was conducted on May 14, 1955, about 500 miles southwest of San Diego, California in the Pacific Ocean. Its primary objective was to understand the vulnerability of submarines to deep-sea nuclear explosions and to assess the effectiveness of such explosions in anti-submarine warfare. Wingman involved a single test, but it was significant due to its unique underwater detonation at a depth of 2,000 feet, which at the time was never tested before. MK-90 Betty nuclear device with a yield of approximately 30 kilotons was the weapon that was used. The test resulted in a large underwater shock wave and a significant surface water spout. Trinity Test On July 16, 1945, in the remote desert of Almogordo, New Mexico, a pivotal moment in history unfolded, the Trinity Test. This event marked the world's first detonation of a nuclear weapon, signaling the dawn of the atomic age and forever changing the course of warfare and international relations. The Trinity Test was part of the top-secret Manhattan Project, a massive U.S. effort to develop atomic weapons with a plutonium-based implosion-type device during World War II. Its explosion, equivalent to about 20 kilotons of TNT, created a massive mushroom cloud 
and turn the sand in the immediate vicinity to glass, known as trinite. The test's environmental and health impacts were significant, with radioactive fallout affecting the surrounding region. It also raised ethical questions about the use of nuclear weapons and their catastrophic potential. The Trinity test represents the incredible scientific achievement of harnessing nuclear energy, but also serves as a somber reminder of the devastating power humanity now possesses. There was a strong feeling. What next? It would be much more than a fireball. Moab. Uh, a large amount of a target in one big explosion, one big boom. In the world of military might, one weapon stands out for its sheer size and power, the Moab, or mother of all bombs. Officially named the GBU-43B Massive Ordnance Air Blast, it's the largest non-nuclear bomb ever used in combat. 1,600-pound GPS-guided bomb is America's largest non-nuclear bomb. Developed by the United States, the Moab was designed not just to destroy, but to send a resounding message. On April 13, 2017, the U.S. military, seeking a decisive blow, turned to the Moab, and it was called into action in a remote region to target a complex network of tunnels and caves. As this giant was unleashed, it was more than a physical attack. It was a demonstration of power and a psychological tactic as its shockwave was felt for miles. The Tuskegee Syphilis Study Nuclear warheads and psychological weapons were not the only tools used to create supremacy during war, but also conduction experimentations. One of them, which was the Tuskegee Syphilis Study, which was another horrifying practice of the time. Hundreds of African-American men from 1932 to 1972 who trusted their doctors were used as a guinea pig for a twisted experiment. The U.S. Public Health Service wanted to see how syphilis would naturally progress if left untreated. So they picked out 600 men, lured them in with the promise of free health care, meals, and even burial insurance. Out of those that volunteered, 399 already had syphilis but were never told about it. Even when penicillin was invented in the 40s, these men were left in the dark until four decades later. This travesty came to light when a whistleblower finally spilled the beans in 1972. The study was immediately canned, creating a massive outcry. The Tuskegee syphilis study led to some sweeping changes in how medical research is conducted, with ethical boards and informed consent becoming the norm. Operation Ivy Mike at 2,500 feet. Operation Ivy Mike was conducted to test the first full-scale thermonuclear device using a new design that utilized liquid detorium, which was a significant advancement in nuclear weapons technology. On November 1, 1952, the Mike produced an initial blinding white flash followed by the formation of a vast churning mushroom cloud rising to over 100,000 feet. The Mike test was the first successful demonstration of a hydrogen bomb with a yield of 10.4 megatons, which was significantly more powerful than any previous nuclear device at that time. Approaching 1,500 feet. The explosion obliterated the test island, Yugolov leaving only a large crater along with radioactive contamination. The test confirmed the feasibility of hydrogen bombs that gave birth to another new era in the arms race, where the focus shifted to developing more powerful and efficient thermonuclear devices. Here is an aerial photo of the test area for the blast, and here is the same area after the blast. Operation White Coat Privates Jones and Tremarchi were volunteers in a study called Project White Coat. During the Cold War, the U.S. military used recruits that wanted to serve the nation without going into the battlefield. They were part of a unique medical research program known as Operation White Coat. This operation involved over 2,300 conscientious objectors from the Seventh-day Adventist Church who volunteered to participate in research aimed at developing defenses against biological agents including Tullamara, yellow fever, and Q fever. The volunteers were then exposed to these agents under controlled conditions 
to study their effects as well as testing vaccines and other treatments. Operation White Coat contributed valuable data that led to FDA-approved drugs. On the flip side, you can't overlook the human element. These were real people, often very young, putting their health on the line in a situation where full disclosure and informed consent might not have been adequately addressed. Then the guy started getting sick. God's sake, I know that I, my records say that my fever reached 104. I don't know. Plutonium files. Helped doctors better understand the effects of radioactivity on the human body. In 1945, while most of the people worried about nukes and missiles, plutonium files was another big thing that was of concern. These experiments were shrouded in secrecy, involving the injection of plutonium into unsuspecting patients across several U.S. hospitals. Yes, the same metal we all know for being radioactive and most dangerous to humans. The primary aim was to understand plutonium's effects on the human body that could be used for developing nuclear weapons against enemies. About 18 individuals, including hospital patients, who were terminally ill or already had debilitating diseases were selected without their knowledge or informed consent. The results were alarming. While providing valuable data on plutonium's metabolism and excretion, these experiments left the subjects with long-term health complications. These experiments came to light in the 90s, causing a public uproar and led to significant changes in U.S. laws governing human experimentation. And Cade was injected in April 1945 at an Oak Ridge hospital. Author Denise Kiernan describes the so-called plutonium files. Operation Northwoods. This was a struggle of Cuban patriots against a Cuban dictator. Now, this is one of the most controversial plans of U.S. military history. In the early 1960s, during the height of the Cold War, a classified proposal known as Operation Northwoods was developed by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. This operation proposed staging false flag acts on U.S. soil and elsewhere to be falsely attributed to the Cuban government. The objective was to create public support for a war against Cuba, aiming to overthrow Fidel Castro's communist regime. The proposed operations included simulated or real acts of sabotage, such as sinking boats filled with Cuban refugees and even causing terror in U.S. cities. It's disturbing how the officials were willing to harm their own public for their sinister intentions to declare the war. The plan was ultimately rejected by President John F. Kennedy, which likely contributed to its remaining classified status until the 1990s. When it was finally revealed, it sparked outrage and disbelief, providing a startling insight into the lengths to which government and military leaders might go during times of geopolitical tension. Project 112 Shad Surveyed over 50 members of the crew and found a number that got sick after the test. Back in the swinging 60s, when people were campaigning for peace and love, the U.S. Department of Defense was secretly spraying U.S. Navy ships with biochemical substances. This project was designed to assess the United States' vulnerabilities to chemical and biological warfare and develop potential defensive measures. The test exposed service members to potentially harmful substances without their knowledge or informed consent. Project 112 Shad involved testing various chemical and biological agents including sarin, VX, nerve gas, and bacillus globigii. These tests were conducted in various locations from the Pacific Ocean to the Alaskan coast, often involving Navy ships and unwitting military personnel as subjects who later caught several dangerous diseases. Decades later, the declassification of Project 112 Shad documents revealed the extent of these tests, leading to veterans demanding for accountability and health care for ailments they attributed to their exposure. The Navy secretly conducted chemical tests on the ship right off Point Loma. Operation Chase Let's dive into a chapter of history that's as alarming as it is true. The story of VX nerve agent and Operation Chase discovered in Britain during the 1950s. The deadliest chemical weapon, VX, was initially a pesticide project gone awry. Fast forward to the 1960s and the U.S. Army is not only producing this deadly agent, but also conducting human trials to determine its lethal dose. Dr. Van Sim, in a harrowing display of commitment, voluntarily received an intravenous 
Infusion of VX. Then entered Operation Chase, Cut Holes and Sink Em, a U.S. Department of Defense program from 1964 to the early 1970s, tasked with disposing of munitions in the ocean. Alarmingly, this included over 3,000 tons of VX and other nerve agents, causing a devastating environmental impact. The fragile ecosystem of our oceans became a dumping ground for lethal substances. Fierce public backlash led to the Marine Protection Research and Sanctuary Act of 1972, ending such practices. Kellogg's Experiment In an audacious blend of nature and nurture, the Kellogg Experiment dared to ask, can a chimpanzee be raised as a human child? It was led by psychologist Winthrop Niles Kellogg and his wife, Luella, who embarked on a groundbreaking journey to raise a baby and a chimpanzee together. In 1931, the Kelloggs started their experiment with their infant son, Donald, and a seven-month-old female chimpanzee named Gua. The aim was to observe whether Gua could develop human-like behaviors when raised in a human environment alongside a human child. For nine months, Donald and Gua lived side by side, receiving identical treatment in feeding, play, and discipline. Remarkably, Gua started to exhibit human-like behaviors. However, the experiment also showed Donald imitating some of Gua's primate behaviors, including chimp-like vocalizations and mimicking her movements, raising concerns about the impact of his development. The Kelloggs terminated the experiment after nine months, partly due to these concerns about Donald's development. The experiment raised ethical questions about the impact of such research on a child's development and well-being. Milgram Experiment one theory is that people learn things correctly whenever they get punished for making a mistake. I know very little about the effect of punishment on learning because almost no truly scientific studies have been made of it in human beings. Here's another example of the dark side of human psychology proved by an experiment. In the 1960s, psychologist Stanley Milgram sought to understand obedience to authority. Participants believing they were part of a learning study were instructed to administer electric shocks to a learner for wrong answers. If you thought it had been the second word, girl, you'd press the second switch. Now, if you get it correct, fine. However, you'll be punished with an electric shock. The shocks, increasing in intensity and supposedly painful, were fake, but the participants were unaware. This one will be 195 volts. Oh, let me out of here. You have no right to keep me here. Let me out. As the experiment progressed, the learner, an actor, feigned pain, eventually falling silent. 75 volts. I don't get no answer. Can't you check in and see if he's all right, please? Despite this, many participants continued administering shocks, even at dangerous levels. Something's happened to that man there. Driven by the experimenter's authority. Astonishingly, a significant majority obeyed orders, revealing a disturbing willingness to inflict pain under authority. But he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he's got to keep going. This experiment had profound implications, showing how ordinary people could perform negative actions when directed by authority figures. It raised ethical concerns and led to stricter human research guidelines. Milgram's findings remain crucial in understanding conformity, obedience, and the potential for cruelty in human nature, resonating in context from education to politics. The Philadelphia Experiment this isn't your average naval tale, it's a blend of war history and science fiction that continues to baffle people. The crux? The U.S. Navy allegedly tried to render the USS Elridge invisible to enemy radar back in 1943 during the heat of World War II. If that doesn't raise an eyebrow, listen to this. Some say the ship didn't just vanish, it teleported from Philadelphia to Norfolk, Virginia and back again in the blink of an eye. Now let's talk about the consequences. The men aboard weren't just seasick or spooked, they were said to suffer from debilitating nausea, mental disorientation and worst of all, some were supposedly fused into the ship's metal. That's right, human beings melded with inanimate structure. Although the US Navy has denied this and said it was all a myth, for some people this, no matter how many times officials deny it, is as real as the ocean itself. Bunker Buster Though nuclear bombs were primarily designed to cause destruction on the surface of the planet, 
Bunker busters were made primarily for underground caves. These weapons are designed to penetrate and destroy underground facilities, command centers, and reinforced bunkers. Bunker busters are engineered to drill deep into the earth or through thick concrete before detonating, making them highly effective against fortified targets. Key specifications include a heavy, durable casing, often made from hardened steel or other robust materials, and a delayed action fuse. This allows the weapon to survive the initial impact and explode after penetration, maximizing destruction. In warfare, bunker busters are invaluable for neutralizing enemy strongholds that are otherwise impervious to standard munitions. Their precision and power make them a strategic asset, albeit one that raises concerns about collateral damage and ethical use in conflict zones. Nuclear Test Swordfish Part of Operation Dominic, Swordfish was designed to study the effects of nuclear detonations and missiles on naval vessels and to understand the potential of anti-submarine nuclear weapons. The test was conducted on May 11, 1962 off the coast of San Diego, California. The Swordfish test created a unique visual spectacle of an enormous churning water column and a distinctive base surge, a ring-shaped cloud of water and spray encapsulating the raw power of underwater nuclear explosions. With a relatively low yield of 20 kilotons, Swordfish provided critical data on the impact of nuclear blasts in marine environments. It demonstrated the feasibility and potential effects of using nuclear weapons against submerged submarines, significantly influencing naval warfare tactics. This was the second part of the Hardtack Missions Underwater Test conducted by the United States on June 9, 1958. The test involved an underwater detonation carried out at the same location, Anatok Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. It was a critical component of understanding the effects of nuclear explosions in aquatic environments and analyzing the water's impact on the explosion's distribution of energy and radiation. The umbrella test involved a relatively smaller nuclear device than the other two tests, with a yield equivalent to 8 kilotons of TNT, detonated 150 feet underwater. The explosion created a massive underwater shockwave and a distinctive dome-shaped water column offering valuable data for military and scientific purposes. While providing insights into nuclear weapons, it affected marine settings and also highlighted the broader consequences of nuclear testing. It raised concerns about radioactive fallout and environmental degradation, contributing to the growing concern for a comprehensive nuclear test ban.